hate to say this in a debate room, but Dan and Eyal were right about something. <laughs> <laughs> determines who wins this debate, because it takes logical precedent above all else, is whether the system that we've established of punishment is cruel and unusual. Monica uniquely shows you in two ways that it's cruel and unusual. <coughs> Firstly, that the punishment of the chip in and of itself is a cruel and unusual one. But secondly, that even if it is not, even if it is merely a, very, a rather bad punishment, the choice between two, two, between two bad punishments makes it all cruel and unusual. Yes, if you are making the same face as Daniel and are, and are completely unpersuaded, and because you haven't listened to Monica's case, you can make that face, but we've analyzed particularly why that's the case, which is why it's particularly sad that Ellie takes absolutely zero time answering any of that, okay? Which is why we're surprised to see that you disagree. Otherwise, we would have liked to hear, to hear any rebuttal at all to our case. Our response to CG's case, and then, basically, three clashes. Firstly, why this issue of cruel and unusual takes precedence. Secondly, why is the chip cruel and unusual? And thirdly, why is the choice cruel and unusual? I may flip two and three. If I will, I'll, I'll flag post. So, firstly, on so before that, a little bit on CG's case. Here, CG's case is weird because CG's case essentially says jail is bad. We don't like jail. However, that does seem to be not really on the clash in this debate. Why? Because this is not about the state choosing which system is. Preferable. If jail is so bad to the point where it's cruel and unusual, then by OG's own <coughs> logic, jail should be illegal. And therefore, we can't have the prop of letting people choose a cruel and unusual punishment. If jail is merely bad, however, then they don't really explain why, why that factors into anything because we are allowed to do bad things for people for a reason, so long as they're not cruel and unusual, again by OG's same logic. So they don't really seem to exist in the debate either way you analyze their case. So, uh, the only reason that they end up giving us is th that if you dislike it, you can go to jail and protest. Like, A, we don't do things that are completely horrendous like torture, just so that people can protest that torture is bad, and B, we don't see it that as a particularly likely outcome. First, why the issue of cruel and unusual take Precedent. So we say. So so we say. Firstly, because OG said so. So thanks, Eli. They tell us that if it's cruel and unusual, they won't do it. And you might say, well, they say that that they don't like this, but they like other things. And how do we weigh? We say the justice in, in system innately makes that weighing for us. It innately is not a utilitarian system, because if it was, if there was a 60% chance of you being a criminal, you would have been in jail. And so therefore, deontology takes precedence into that system, and OO agrees. So when you weigh that against OO's practical material, note that OO agree that the deontological material here, and the issue of cruel and unusual, takes precedent. The thirdly, it's just logically proceeding. It just doesn't, if, if we prove that, then everything else in the debate doesn't exist. Now, th th then we have the issue of choice. They give the, like this magic option of it's a choice. Why is the choice not enough? A, we say OG never take it very seriously to begin with, which is why they tell us you wouldn't let you cut off your own hands. Because a cruel and unusual punishment which violates autonomy to, su to such a deep level is something which they won't do, even if it's an opt-in choice. Secondly, say, so, uh, second, secondly, uh, yeah, so, so exactly that, and secondly, because we say that in our own case, the choice itself is not like a neutrality in this case, but inflicts harm in and of its own. In the face of that harm, from Monica's case stems directly that people are not really making anything that could be construed as a rational or meaningful choice. They're just being subjected to like a complete, to, to a new and clever form of psychological and mental excruciating torture. So, firstly, on so firstly, on why even if both punish and I flip them, why if, even if both punishments are, are are bad things, the choice between them is a cruel and unusual punishment. The Sophie's choice analogy should be helpful here. The, once you have you have chosen to do something bad to yourself, whenever you encounter that to do something terrible to yourself, whenever you encounter that harm down the road in your life, you, in the immortal words of Radiohead, did it to yourself. You are the culprit in hurting yourself in such a crucial in such a crucial way. And we know that this is such a disenfranchising and identity-shattering experience because we can see it in the cases where that happens in real life. Look at victim blaming in cases of rape and sexual assault. How the idea that I did it to myself is such a, sh a shattering of bodily autonomy and such a disdain for human dignity. 
We say the fact that you let me choose to inflict harm upon myself makes it so that whenever I encounter any reminder of that, be that in the prison yard or the schoolyard, I am excruciatingly tortured by the choice that I made and the ramifications it has on my life. Should have taken it seriously, CG. So, secondly, on why it's a bad thing and also a cruel and unusual thing. And they tell us, oh, why would anybody want to break the rules? Rules are so great. We love rules. And we say, that's fine saying from where we sit here in the Allianz campus. But the rules were made by some people for some people and they're not made for everyone. And when you live a certain lifestyle, as Monica analyzes, breaking the rules is part of your life. Open up. We've explained that today people are over punished by the system. Under our system, it can no longer happen because yeah, they that, can that just hinges completely out. on the idea that we haven't proven anything and that the chip punishment isn't bad, right? Just I'll prove it and then you lose. So, no thanks. So, it's, whatever. So, uh, so, here's the idea. Take the analogy of the road. In the road, you always have to commit a certain violation. Drive too fast, cut somebody off. Like this analogy is the life in Compton. Every choice that you make, since the legal system and your infrastructures weren't structured with you in mind, forces you to break the rules. You have to get to school by jumping through a, bro a broken window or trespassing through a bad schoolyard because the infrastructures aren't right. You have to have to go through certain rites of passage in order to be accepted into your social circles. You have to you you have to not talk to the police and not be a snitch because that has crucial physical ramifications on you. You have to break curfew in the case in the common cases where they're cast upon minority neighborhoods in states all around the world, not just in the West, but all around the world and also in the West. You have to protest and you also have to be yourself, like Monica tells you about LGBT activists. We say when the rules weren't structured for you, there are just many, many daily cases in which you encounter the fact that you have to break them. At this point, this is an actual violation of your autonomy. This is an yeah, actual yeah. violation of your ability to to, cut yourself, to conduct yourself in society, this is actual arm cutting. And so for those two reasons, because that punishment on its own is akin to arm cutting and cruel and unusual, and because even if it weren't, the choice between two evils is cruel and unusual, we beg to oppose.